your father owned three grocery stores, a boat, and a plane to be burglarized in people's houses. That's stupid. You, you, you agree with me that's stupid? Everybody say that's stupid. Now, I want to show you something. If you knew who God really designed you to be, in many places, in many times, you would be someplace other than where you are. There are some people that, who spend their life in the club, but they spend their life in the club because they haven't seen the picture that God has for them. You know, I've been in a lot of clubs. And to this day, I'm still trying to figure out what I accomplished, other than smoking my hair, um, sitting on the side, you know, hey man, what's up, yeah, what you saying? You know, in the Bahamas, we have a, a little language of, yeah, what you saying, Dred? Yeah, everything cool, yeah, everything cool, man. Yeah, what's, what's happening? I don't know, what's happening? And then you sit down, yeah, man, you know, smoking this weed, yeah, man, smoking this weed. Exactly what are we accomplishing? The people who are smoking don't even know why they're smoking. Everybody say, ignorance. Now, I want to read the scripture again for you. It says, no, we speak God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden, that God destined for our glory. What I want you to know there is that God says, we are destined for glory. Everybody say, destined for glory. You see, some people don't understand that they're destined for glory. So they sing stupid songs like, finally things come around. All he heard me a search, search for me, get it by the pound, or whatever they say. They say something like that. They so finally things come around the herb or the weed we searching for, now we get it by the pound. We sing dumb songs. God has some things prepared for you, but sometimes you just don't see. Third John verse 2 says, Beloved, or my buddy, God is saying, buddy, my son, Above all things, I want you to prosper and be in health. But many times, we don't recognize what God has prepared for us, so we accept something less. Here's the problem. The problem is that you can't see God with your natural eyes. It has to come from the spirit world. You see, the scripture that I read initially, it says, but it has been revealed to us by His Spirit. So some things have to be revealed to us. And that's what the revelation is all about. So tonight I want to show you some things from the revelation. There is a seen world and there is an unseen world. But here's the issue. The seen world is more perm the unseen world is more permanent than the seen world. And we spend all of our time and energy focusing in on the seen world. We focus in on what we see. Let me give you an example. Whenever there's a car, a car does not appear in the physical realm before it happens in the spiritual realm. You understand what I'm saying? The Ford, when Ford Motor Company is going to design a car, it starts in someone's head. We can't see it, we can't touch it, and then it appears. Because the, the unseen world is more powerful than the seen world. And what God is saying is that we have to bring the unseen into the seen, on the seen, in the seen, seen, you know what I mean? We need to learn how to see. Everybody say, we need to learn how to see. Everything in life begins finished. And if you never finish your life before you start it, you have problems. Let me give you another example. If you're going to build a building, what's the first requirement? You know what they ask you to do? They ask you to finish it before they give you permission to start. You have to actually build the building, design the lights, put the electrical outlets where they're supposed to go, put the bathroom here, put everything there, and then present it to the authorities and they say, can I build it? What do we do with our lives? We start living, but we don't even know where we're going. Everybody say seeing. And unseen. Here's another scripture I want to read for you. It says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. You need a personal revelation of the real you, not what we see today. You need to see you. The you that we see is the you that appears. 
But the you that you need to see is not the one that we see. You need to see the you that God sees. And after you see it in the spirit, then you bring it into the natural. Are you with me? If you're with me, say, I'm with you. No eye has seen, but it's been revealed to us by his spirit. Here's the deal. Satan blinds the minds of unbelievers. Satan sets it up so that you can't see. Have you ever noticed that um, after you come to Christ, you ask yourself the question, you say, how could I have been so stupid? Raise your hand if that happened to you before. You ask yourself that question. I look back at my life and I say, how could I have been so stupid? Some of us need to see the unseen. You need the revelation of what God has for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 to 5 says this, says, Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled for those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So Satan blinds us. Satan puts, puts things in our way. He gives us wrong information. Most of what we see on television today in the media is wrong information. Would you agree with that? Are we supposed to be exposing our bodies in public? No, your body is a